we all know that next generation networks offer a variety of services sometimes the users are interested to configure and even create their own services for that there are a variety of tools available there in the market we are going to look at different classes of services how different tools uh, can offer these services and uh, we look at simple service scenarios for next gen generation networks to unleash the true potential we want the customers and the end users to feel at ease in defining the scenarios up to their will these could incl include any to any communication using simplex duplex both half and full duplex and even any casting for that we need to have some kind of creation mechanism luckily here in ngn we we do have those tools other kind of interesting scenarios are unified messaging which provides a sing single platform to offer services including sms mms um, over the top services voice video multimedia interactive traffic all under one framework then personalized services including uh, one's own wallet uh, payment record uh, unique authentication password management etc then voice and data services including audio visual and separate services um calls which are initiated from the web typically sip initiated calls as in whatsapp um, skype etc then integrating voice and data on virtual private networks is is a desire or it's a class of services available to the customers uh, then call center which offers multiple uh, business calls uh, to be incorporated and then audio video conferencing for these services to be offered uh, we must identify the entities that we have come across um, quite number of times these include the media gateway that performs the translation from one format into the other uh, the gateway controllers the calling agents uh, that is a sip caller like uh, um, ip telephone soft switches uh, we know which act as um, intermediaries between different calling parties uh, application servers uh, of variety of services and the application creation environment the place where exactly these services can be configured the application creation or the user service creation has to go through a certain life cycle these could include a uh, service conception um, of course it is analyzed and then a certain service is declared service creation um, once it has been created it is going to be tested against certain benchmarks uh, the deployment of a service in real time setting um, that we call uh, in situ service uh, then uh, the service provisioning and uh, operations including billing uh, ensuring the quality of service etc and once an application has been uh, executed and this uh, service has been provided the application has to be removed it is the overall picture of the um, um, entities which are involved in service provisioning starting from the application creation environment at the top we have the application server we have the call servers the media server the gateways uh, you might also see something that is we have uh, another access network we have a packet network and we could equally have non ngn networks so uh, the point to be highlighted here is whatever tool we use would be fulfilling a certain requirement that is something that we'll discuss in our uh, subsequent modules as well if you we look at a certain service scenario let's take an example of a virtual private network um on uh, um plain old telephone system on one end and ip on the other end for um small business so we have um 
central office. We have the remote offices also known as Soho's. So that's the scenario. So if you look at the possible challenges that we would have to solve and we need to provide the right tools and technologies for NGNs, uh, these could include group management, uh, groups which could be physical, which could be logical. The roles of different entities, uh, the calling and called parties making calls which are permissible and calls which are uh, not permissible. Uh, and then integration or the super imposition of uh, voice uh, along with data, uh, voice along with video, and uh, additional services like personal address book, uh, like maintaining one's own profile, etc. The reference architecture that we would actually be imagining once we look at various technologies is here. We see that we have uh, uh, different sites. Uh, we have the main site and then we have Soho sites. These Soho sites are um, separated by IP network, which is a packet network. Uh, we, have, uh, we also have a public switch telephone network that provides uh, um, non-IP based calls to be initiated and terminated into. We have SIP that takes care of everything that's concerned with call initiation, call termination, call management, etc. Uh, in the uh, Soho offices, uh, we have uh, local infrastructure comprising an exchange, kind of something like private automatic branch exchange or an IP exchange. And we have uh, end users in the form of IP telephone like Cisco IP communicator, uh, the Huawei communicator. And then uh, we have uh, some uh, internet connectivity for uh, uh, some uh, DSL based router as well. So we have these kind of uh, uh, disparate networks uh, and the scenario is uh, where we have virtual private network for the head office and remote sites. So if you imagine this, uh, this is a very complex scenario. We would come across various technologies that would be addressing part of it. Um, the reference that I've taken is uh, the next generation networks service offering standpoint. Um, it is the summary or the uh, concluding report of the Euriscom project back in 2002. Uh, the project was titled Euriscom project P1109. Uh, the authors have summarized their lessons uh, for general public in the form of published articles. So this is the reference that I have consulted.